Okay, helping the uh, kiln this morning, and mostly what I did was some glaze testing on some new white clay. Um, it's clay that I kind of tried before, mostly for hand building though. It's called Bunkum White, and it is by um, High Water, of course. That's basically all the clay that I use is High Water. I tried this before. It's a white stoneware, and. Um, you know, it was fine before. It's kind of more of a buff. You know, the finished clay has more of a buff look. There's a slight little bit of a yellow kind of buff look to it, which is good. Um, the problem I had this time, I ordered it online. Uh, I just couldn't get it anywhere else, so I, I wanted to try it. So I ordered it online, and um, the batches that I have are very wet. It's extremely wet clay, but it throws really nice. So before I show you that, I will bring you over to what's drying here. Some really large mugs. Hopefully I don't drop it. Kind of backlit, but um, it's a really nice throwing clay. I had some trouble with the handles though because you know pulled handles, you're adding a lot of water to them. Um, I had to make them much thicker than what I normally would do. So, let's see, for example, this piece, it's kind of a fairly thin handle. And when I was putting it on, um, there was a lot of cracking. It was like falling apart. The, the moon that I put on there was cracking in the middle, so we'll have to see when it gets fired if it survives. So I don't know about this clay, if it's just a fluke, if it, um, you know, sometimes you can get wet batches of clay, and it, it's just, some, it just happens, so... You just kind of have to keep trying it and uh, hope that you don't get the cracking and, and the frustrating things. Eventually it will uh, all work out and you'll get regular clay. So um, we'll see. I have a few more bags that I can look at and see if they're going to be all right. But it seems fine. I don't see any cracking while it's drying. So that's a plus. So, so far I like it a lot. I, I mainly use um, speckled brown stoneware or... Um, redstone something like that so I want to um, start trying some white clay and be able to do some different things that I can't do with the darker clays so what I did was let's go over to what I fired I did a lot of glaze testing on some tiles here mostly it's um, Kentucky Mudworks glaze but I do have some a few other companies too so this is um, Caribbean Green by Minnesota Clay Company. So this is actually what I was hoping to get when I tested it on the red clay. That is a really nice glaze. There's a little bit of pinholing that occurred. I got the same thing on red clay when I did it. Um, it's probably just because I need to add a little bit more water to it. It was pretty thick, um, you know, coming out of the, the jar because it's it was, um, you know, it's a powdered glaze. And this is what it looked like on red. So totally different look. Here, I'll set them down and compare them. It's a little dark in here, but um, it's much more, it's definitely a white clay glaze for sure. So I'm much happier with the result on the, the white stoneware. And that's the uh, Bunkum White by High Water. So what else? I also have um, Jade, oops, Jade Moss by Kentucky Mud Works. Now this has a lot of pinholing, so it didn't do that on red clay at all. You probably can't see it. Maybe there's a little bit of a texture that's getting picked up there, but a lot of pinholing. Not too sure why it did that on white clay. I wouldn't have expected that. So I didn't really like what it looks like on white clay. I knew it was going to be pretty light and kind of dull anyhow. So probably not going to be able to use that, but we'll do a comparison see. This is on red rock clay, so you can really get a, a sense of the difference that you get from the two glazes. It, it, it doesn't even look as shiny on the red clay. Definitely would use that on red clay. I'm kind of thinking about only using bungum white and red rock in the future, and maybe not using speckled brown at all anymore. That way I kind of get the best of both worlds. I do use porcelain just for hand building mostly, but those would be the two throwing clays that I'm really considering. 
So, what's next? Um, waxy Blue, that was the tile that fell there, probably made a loud noise. Waxy Blue is by Kentucky Mudworks, and it's one of the best glazes I've ever used. It's very dependable. You might be seeing what looks like um, pinholing, but it's probably just because there was a texture on this tile. Let me see if I can get into the sun here. There we go. That's, that's not pinholing. I think it's just the air that was trapped in the texture. I put some heavy lines on there. So, um, that looks pretty good. It doesn't look as good as it does on red clay, but it's still good and it's, it's definitely usable. It's a good um, glaze to do overlaps with though. So, what else? Tons of glaze testing here. I won't, well, this one, this one was just a, a red glaze test. It's, um, the jade moss again with um, speckled ivory over it. Speckled ivory is by Minnesota Clay and jade moss is Kentucky Mudworks and that's on red clay, red rock. Not great, but something a little different. So one of the trouble glazes of all time has to be Fern Mist by Laguna. I thought maybe it would work on this white clay. It's it's pinholes and does all kinds of horrible things on every clay so now it also does it on this clay so it's just got tons of huge pinholes and bubbles and it even dripped all the way down I don't know what to do with it maybe I could use it on porcelain just on hand-built flat things and it might work but it's a shame because it is a nice glaze but it's too much trouble it's it's just I don't know what they were thinking when they made this glaze or if I'm just firing it wrong it's just not worth the trouble of trying to figure out what to do with it another glaze by them that I was having really good luck with is called speckled moss I've never done it on white clay so it looks so much lighter than I'm used to it had a bunch of pinholing problems I've been getting with this now it was fine for the first you know few times I used it and then all of a sudden pinholes and it does it on every single clay just like fern mist does so I don't know what Laguna has going on if they like more of a slow cool or if you're supposed to hold the kiln at uh, the maturing temperature because I never do because um, I have a manual kiln so it's just not something that I really do so a couple of uh, tiles I did some overlaps so we're back with um, Kentucky Mudworks again one of their most popular glazes, it might be the most popular, is called Juno Gold. And this is Jade Moss, also by Kentucky Mudworks, over Juno Gold. So um, I'm going to show you in a second what Juno Gold looks like by itself. This kind of came out just sort of like a gray overlap. It's kind of nice. I mean, it wouldn't be really usable, but it's kind of a nice glaze anyways, combination. So Juno Gold by itself looks like, and I'm trying to keep the sun here, um, really, really nice glaze. Now I, I understand why everybody loves it so much. It looks like two or three glazes on its own. I'm not sure if the camera can pick up all the subtle detail of what's going on there, but I just, you know, in these test tiles, I just had put some lines in while I, when I threw it to show the, how glazes break, and this is showing up a lot of that detail breaking to much more of an amber brown color so it's kind of like a creamy brown gold on itself and then you have even a darker brown at the very rim of the piece so it kind of almost does look like possibly three glazes so that's definitely a keeper and uh, apparently it overlaps well with a lot of their other glazes I'm not getting a lot of great results with that but here's another overlap this is um, Waxy Blue, which I just showed you a minute ago, over Juno Gold, and it's not bad. It's a little bit of a gray-blue um, overlap. There's possibly a pinhole, but it's probably just an air bubble that was trapped underneath the, underneath the um, texture. So one of the nicest things of the firing was this is called Hillbilly Blue. I ended up getting a whole bucket of this because I liked it on red clay and I'm going to show you what it looked like on red clay. Hillbilly Blue came out a really nice pale subtle blue on this um, white clay, this spunkum white. 
So I'm really happy with that because it's so hard to find the right kind of blue glazes to use. So that's hillbilly blue all by itself and it kind of has a nice, you know, foamy white um, top to it and then kind of the depth of it is a little bit of a darker blue, but it's still more of like a, a denim kind of blue look. So on, let me just get the red clay tile. Um, actually, this is brown. I, I didn't do it on red, but it probably would look pretty similar if we can get a look at that. So this is um, speckled brown stoneware right here, and that is the white. So pretty, pretty close, and it's it's more of like a denim look, like I said. So that's hillbilly blue by itself. Then I started trying a few of their other glazes because you can get just a pound of. Um, you know, dry glaze, and that, that's very convenient to be able to just get a pound, and then you can mix it up and try it. This is called Stardust. It's basically like a black glaze, but it has a lot of interest to it. doesn't really come out looking black, so uh, the description was a little bit different than what the result is, and it's, it's more of, um, you know, it kind of does, again, look like two glazes. But it's kind of more of a black that has a lot of, um, you know, texture to it and more brown than black, really. But it's described as a black glaze, but still not really. It, it's kind of nice. It's different. And it, from far away, it does look a little bit green, kind of like an olive green color. So hopefully that's uh, showing up on the camera there pretty well. And a few of their other glazes that I have been using. Let me just grab. This is uh, Petunia. It's you know one of their purple glazes. And I think it's the only um, glossy purple glaze that they have. It might look a little bit dark on camera. It's, it's much more of a true purple in person anyways. It's hard to tell losing the sunlight. But um, it's re really good. It, it shows up the texture really well. I could see definitely using that. So, um, Spring Green is by Laguna, and I've had this for a long time, and it's just been sitting there. It's very bright, which, you know, Spring Green would be. On um, darker clays, it kind of is a little bit more subtle. I've been having problems with it shedding off of um, the pieces during the firing. So I haven't really been using it. It didn't do that at all here. It looks really good and it can be kind of a drippy glaze. You can see on the edge there it dripped a bit. But it's nice. It's definitely worth using on a white stoneware too. One of the Kentucky Mudworks glazes that I didn't like on darker clay is called Kentucky Bluegrass. And it is nice. It has a lot of interest to it. It's just probably not a glaze that I would use. It's just not the right... Um, uh, color spectrum for me. I like a little bit of a brighter colors for what I'm doing, but um, it, it's it's a nice glaze. It looks like it'd be very reliable. Potential pinholing going on there. It, the camera won't pick it up, but there's some possible pinholes starting there. But it looks nice. It, it's something, you know, more of a northern color, I guess. It's kind of dark. Got a little bit um, too much of a dark look, even on, on, on white clay. So really, that is about it that I wanted to show you. I did mostly tiles and flat stuff in this firing. Um, the other glaze that I really like to use a lot is called Copper Patina. And this is the Buncombe White clay that you can't see because I glazed the whole thing. But it has more of a mottled look on this clay than what I'm used to. And Copper Patina is also by Kentucky Mudworks. It's not considered food safe. They don't recommend it for food surfaces. This is what it looks like on porcelain. So on porcelain it's much smoother. Doesn't really have all that modeling. It's kind of like an instant antique look. You can definitely put it on the outside of mugs and stuff like that. Um, which is what I'm probably going to do. It's just, it's, it's really nice. It's worth using. It's been very reliable. It blends well with almost every glaze I've used. Just a shame that it's not food safe, but um, it's still worth using on the outside of pieces and, and for you know non-functional pieces, it would be a great choice. So that's about it. And um, thank you for watching.